All right, solving 30, 60, 90 triangles. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the basic uh, 30, 60, 90 triangle up here. Basic one uh, is when the hypotenuse is 2. Why do we choose 2? Well, because it divides evenly. Because remember, if this is 60, this is 30. If I were to draw the rest of this right here, that would be 60. That would be 30. It makes an equilateral triangle, so this whole bottom would be 2, which means this side is 1. And then if you remember, we figured out by Pythagorean theorem that this side was the square root of 3. Or, we, drew it, we would write it like this. x, 2x, x times the square root of 3. Now, x is the smallest side, it's across from the smallest angle. 2x is the largest side, it's across from the largest angle. This is the medium angle, it's across from the medium side. Okay? So, different ways to solve these. The first way to solve it is just by recognizing the pattern. To go from here to this side, remember that this is really just half of an equilateral triangle. So if this is 5, this whole side would be 5 plus 5, which means y right here, since it's the same, would be 10. So if this is 5, this is 2 times 5, or 10. This side right here, to go this way, you'll notice we take whatever number this is and multiply it by the square root of 3. So y is 10, and then x it's going to be 5 times the square root of 3. And that's it. You're done. The pat learning the pattern is the easiest way. However, if you can't remember the pattern, we can still logic through this. If you can remember that this is going to be, if you can figure out that this is 5 and that's 60, then this has got to be 10 because this is half of an equal triangle. If you can figure that out, then you can just do Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus x squared is equal to 10 squared. Okay, so that's 25. 10 squared is 100. Subtract 25 from both sides. That would be 75, right? Then take the square root of both sides, so x is the square root of 75. Well, let's break that down. That's the that's 25 times 3. Square root of 25 times square root of 3 is square root of 75. Square root of 25, though, is just 5. And there you go. x is going to be 5 times the square root of 3. Now, the other way you can do it is if you have this right here and you've got your notes out, you can set up a proportion. These triangles are similar because of angle angle. 90 and 90, 60 and 60, so triangles are similar by angle angle similarity. So 5 matches up with 1, y matches up with 2. Five over one, y over two. And then we just gotta cross multiply. Or multiply both sides by two. And you're going to get y is equal to 10. To set up the other one, 5 matches up with 1 again. x matches up with the square root of 3. So 5 over 1 is equal to x over the square root of 3. And we just got to cross multiply. 1 times x is just x. 5 times the square root of 3. And I could get that as a decimal, but we're just going to leave it right there. So, there you have it. First way is just learn the pattern. The second way, you got to figure out one of the sides, then you just got to do Pythagorean theorem from there. And then the last way, of course, is just the proportion. All right. On to this problem right here. 
to go from this side to this side. From here to here, you notice we take 1 times 2, or whatever this side is, x times 2. Coming backwards, though, I would do the opposite. So that's going to, that means x is going to be 14 divided by 2, which is just 7. Once I know this, though, it's really easy. 7, going to this side, I just take whatever this, this number is, multiply it by the square root of 3. And that's it. Pattern. Easiest method. But if you can't remember the pattern, we can still just do Pythagorean Theorem. Now, to do Pythagorean Theorem, we are going to have to figure out what this side is. We have to remember... Okay, if this is 14, this has got to be, well, 14, if I make the whole thing, if I flip it over, this is 60, 30 plus 30 is 60, so they're all the sides are 60, so all the sides are equal, so this whole side is going to be 14, so which means x has got to be 7. Once I know x is 7, it's a simple matter of doing Pythagorean Theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So 7 squared plus y squared is equal to 14 squared. So let's see here. 49 plus y squared. Uh, 14 times 14 is 196. Then I'm going to subtract 49 from both sides. And we get y squared is equal to 147. So y is equal to the square root of 147. Now this one's a little bit tougher, but I do recognize that 1 plus 4 is 5, 5 plus 7 is 12. That means 12 can be divided by 3, so 147 can be divided by 3. Just so happens that this is going to be square root of 49 times the square root of 3. 49 times 3 is 147. Square root of 7? Well, I'm sorry, square root of 49 is just 7. And you can't take the square root of 3, so you just got to leave it. Two different ways to get the same answer. And then the last one, using proportions. As long as I can remember this, as long as I can remember this triangle up here, 1 square root of 3, 2, I can set my proportion. X matches up with 1. I've got to do 14 here. 14 matches up with 2. And then you're just going to cross multiply and solve. Don't even need to. X divided by 1 is just X. 14 divided by 2 is just 7. Same thing. Y matches up with the square root of 3. Fourteen matches up with two, and you can go ahead and cross multiply this one. That's fine. So two y is equal to fourteen times the square root of three. Divide both sides by two. Well, fourteen divided by two. That's just seven times the square root of three. Three different ways to get the exact same answers. And then the last one down here. This one's a little tougher. It's a little tougher. To go down here, I have to, well, if I were going up, I would multiply by the square root of 3. Coming backwards, I'm going to divide by the square root of 3. So x is equal to 12 divided by the square root of 3. And you can leave it right here. That's perfectly fine. And then if I'm going from here to here, I'm going to multiply by 2. That's the pattern. 1 times 2 is 2, or take this number times 2. So y would be 12 over the square root of 3 times 2, which is 24 over the square root of 3. Now to simplify this. 
you can do one of two things. You can multiply top and bottom by the square root of 3. 12 times the square root of 3. The square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 9. But the square root of 9 is just 3. And 12 divided by 3 is 4 times the square root of 3. This is how most people like it, but again, Mrs. Brionis and I accept this answer too. They're the same thing. And we can do the same thing down here. Uh, multiply top and bottom by the square root of 3. So we get 24 times the square root of 3 over the square root of 9. 3 times 3 is 9. But the square root of 9 it would just be 3. And that simplifies to 8 times the square root of 3. And that makes sense, because if this is x, this would be 2 times it. 2 times 4 squared of 3 would be 8 squared of 3. All right. To do Pythagorean theorem. Whew. That's going to be tough on this one. Okay. First thing we got to do here is recognize that x, the y here, is going to be 2 times whatever this is. So let's see here. Um, so I'm going to do a squared, x squared, plus b squared, 12 squared, is equal to c squared. I'm not going to do y squared. I'm going to make that 2x squared. Okay, so x squared plus, well, 12 squared is 144. 2x times 2x. 2 times 2 is 4. x times x is x squared squared. Then we'll subtract an x squared from both sides. 144 is equal to 3x squared. Divide both sides by 3. x squared is 48. And then we just need to simplify it. So x is equal to square root of 48, which is well, square root of 16 times the square root of 3, so it's 4 square root of 3. Once I know x, I can find y, because y is equal to 2 times that. Whew! Definitely the hardest one. And then the last one, the proportion method. 12 matches up with... Square root of 3. X matches up with 1. You can cross multiply if you want to, but we don't need to here. X divided by 1 is just X, so X is equal to 12 over the square root of 3. And again, we've already seen that that simplifies to 4 square root of 3. To do y, 12 matches up with square root of 3. y matches up with 2. And I would cross multiply. So we're going to get y times the square root of 3. 12 times 2 is. So y times the square root of 3 is equal to 24. I'm running out of room here. I apologize. So I divide both sides by the square root of 3. And y is equal to 24 divided by the square root of 3, which we've already seen is... Oh, sorry. 24 divided by the square root of 3 is... 8 squared of 3. Last one I'm going to show you. This is definitely a stud question. Okay. Again, first thing I would do is right at the top of my paper, I would draw my basic 30, 60, 90 triangles. So 1, 
2, square root of 3. Uh, the pattern, go from here to here, I would multiply by 2. If you remember, this is x, this is 2 times x, this is x times square root of 3. So to go from here to here, I would multiply by 2. So coming backwards, I would divide by 2. So it means x is equal to 4 square root of 6 divided by 2. Well, those cancel out, and we just get 2 times the square root of 6. Going this way, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this side right here and multiply it by the square root of 3 times the square root of 3. So y is equal to 2 times the square root of 6 times the square root of 3. Well, that's going to give me 2 times the square root of 18. But 18 can be broken down into 9 times 2. Square 9 is just 3, so I'm going to get 6 times the square root of 2. All right, and then the last, uh, I'm not going to go through Pythagorean theorem for this one. Uh, obviously we could, x we just figured out was, since it's always half, x is 2 times the square root of 6 right here, so we do a squared plus y squared equals c squared. I'll get it set up for you. If we do the Pythagorean theorem method y squared plus 2 square root of 6, all that squared, is equal to 4 square root of 6, all that squared. If you're typing this in your calculator, make sure you put parentheses around this to square the entire thing. Okay? And then you just go through this and solve for y. But the last way, of course, is the proportion method. Uh, so x matches up with 1. 4 square root of 6 matches up with 2. X1. 4 square root of 6 matches up with 2. Don't need to cross multiply because x divided by 1 is just x. So x is going to be 4 divided by 2 is 2 square root of 6. You can cross multiply if you want to, it's not going to hurt anything you get 2x is equal to 4 square root of 6, and you divide by 2. Same thing. And then to set up the other side. Well, y matches up with the square root of 3. And then 4 square root of 6 matches up with 2. And you can cross multiply if you want to. 2y is equal to... 4 square root of 6 times the square root of 3. Now that's going to give me 4 times the square root of 18, which that can be broken down into 4 times 3 times the square root of 2. 4 times 3 is 12. Divide both sides by 2, and we're going to get y is equal to 12 divided by 2 is 6, square root of 2. Same thing, no matter how you do it. Okay? So, we have three methods. First, just recognizing the pattern. That's probably the easiest if you can learn it. If you can't learn it, you can do proportions. That's probably the second easiest. And if you can't remember that, then you just have to logic your way through and just use Pythagorean Theorem. If you can't do Pythagorean Theorem, don't know what to tell you. Sorry. Good luck, everyone. Bye.